Be the Talk, episode 243, featuring Bridget Long. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Bridget Long. Bridget, are you ready to talk? I'm ready. Bridget Long is a mother, direct sales professional, investor, speaker, and life and business strategist. Bridget Long, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Your talk is called Power of the Mind. It was at TEDx Southampton University, and a great talk because uh, you make a really good point. After the tragedy that you endured, Bridget, you realize something very profound. You realize that no one can make us feel anything. And we can put our power of our mind to good use. And you have all kinds of great tips, like uh, realizing that that failure is a key to success, practicing gratitude, being present, journaling, and being the change that you wish to see in the world, being active like that. Just wanted to welcome you to the talk. Well, thank you so much for having me, Nathan. I'm delighted to be here. Well, please, um, you know, take us uh, a few moments, take us behind and beyond that talk. Give us a little bit of context. You mentioned a horrible tragedy. Uh, I'm actually not sure what that tragedy was and uh, whether there are reasons for uh, not getting too detailed about that and feel free uh, certainly not to do that. Or if there's something that I missed, love to be filled in as well. Uh, okay. Well, the backstory is, um, I just, uh, got this idea one day that after I, I do quite a lot of public speaking anyway, and, uh, I'm a massive fan of Ted and Ted TEDx. And, uh, I just, uh, I, I did quite a, a key speech, um, in Paris uh, last year. And I thought, right, well, this could be a, a really exciting challenge. And uh, I'd never even touched on my backstory before Mm. um, in a public platform. And um, so I just started, you know, Googling it and and, uh, and I saw there was something local to me. I live on the south coast in the UK, (laughs) so I'm uh, the other side of the pond. And uh, I saw there was something local and I thought, right, okay, well, I'm going to um, see if I can come to the stage and add value. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, most people won't remember everything we say, but sometimes there can be one or two key things that people will take away with them. And it will just literally change the whole way they think about their lives. So I thought that, you know, maybe if I just touch on a little bit, I mean, I wouldn't say that my story was an absolute tragedy because there are always worse Mm-hmm. But I had a, there was a, I was presented with a massive challenge um, eight years ago, and uh, it's a challenge that most uh, uh, women who are mothers um, do think about at some time. Although I'm sure they don't ponder on it. But uh, uh, I um, uh, my children were actually abducted, mm-hmm. and uh, I then spent five years um, going. A long way around the world to uh, to get them back because failure was not an option. And in that process, I of course went on this fabulous journey of self discovery uh, of how I was going to you know overcome those barriers. And the, when the only weapon I had was the way I had to approach it through thought. Well, that uh, absolutely powerful. There there are movies <laughs> that are written about those kinds of real yes. tragedies, and I can certainly appreciate, I know I'll talk universe, we can appreciate the power of managing and leading yourself and managing your mind in a situation yes. like that, because I, I can't imagine all of the uh, the difficulties along the way, just the shock and the trauma is just the beginning and yet yeah. you shared all of those steps that allowed you to, if, if I heard you correctly, uh, successfully regain custody of the children or, or, or leadership yes. of the children. So yes. um, I, I, I don't really know what else to say. So please, uh, you know, fill in the blanks or anything that you'd like to share or explain um, uh, at, at that point. Well, I, I think I have... Um uh, I, I'm just, you know, an ordinary story uh, backed up by an extraordinary uh, will. 
Um, I, I think in the talk I called it was my, my secret weapon was the power of a mother's love. Mm. So it's something that's universal and that most people can relate to on some level. And, um, and I think that the, the key was really a forgiveness. Of, uh, and I think really it was more to forgive myself mm. for, in a way, allowing it to happen. Taking responsibility without feeling guilty, I think, is the, is the thing. And that was a, a huge, huge um, journey, inner journey. So the inner journey, so, so really the, the events were just the catalyst of opening up this massive and until that point totally unknown um, you know, deep universe of, mm. of what we were capable of. I mean, we, we know, don't we, that uh, we're, we're only, we only use about 10% of our, our, our mental capacity, mm-hmm. which is an absolute shocker. And, I, uh, and, uh, and I think that really, you know, this was really gave me the opportunity to really drive down and discover who I was and what I was capable of as a person. And, um, and then, and then bring that, that message to the world, you know, uh, from, from, from the stage in this particular case. Well, and I think that uh, just the story, the the tragedy of it, and also the victory, happily, of it, yes. in, in your case, a happy ending and, and all of that. But there are many yes. happy places along the way that, that we can yes. all learn, and it really does scale. It really does apply to all of us. And I, I love that you touched on that nuance um, about the uh, the responsibility without having the guilt and i think for a lot of us out there bridget uh you know we're in that prison of you know guilt or um shooting ourselves uh i've heard it called or shooting i i call it bullshitting uh yeah. and and it's a very right. fi- yeah it's a fine line because uh, we we see people out there in the media. There are public fi- figures out there, and they don't seem to always take responsibility. We don't want to be like that. But then the alternative can be to lock ourselves up in a prison and not realizing that the person that holds the key is ourselves. And uh, looking, you know, maybe looking to try to earn some kind of forgiveness or or get it from someone else, but not realizing that the, we're the one. That has to choose to forgive. Just as you said, you have to choose to forgive yourself. Circumstances that may not have even been mostly your fault at all, but a piece of that as a mother's love is, is always going to feel, you know, that, that, um, I, 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 well, I can't describe it because I'm not a mother, but uh, I can imagine that that responsibility really, really extends. And it's so hard to find the end of that. Uh, so congratulations on that nugget, because I think that really is going to help and free up a lot of uh, a lot of us in talk universe. If, if you could speak to anyone listening right now and maybe there's something, yes. maybe it's not a child abduction, but maybe it's something <laughs> totally different. Maybe it's something that seems really, really minor, but but it's really big to, to someone listening. What would you say to them right now based on what you've learned, Bridget? Well, I think one of the things, the key things I've learned is a, uh, to start general, if you like, is that everybody is suffering with something. Um, and relatively speaking, it, it's it, it, on different levels and for what is very serious to one person might not be to another so it's having a deep, deep respect for each individual's current challenges, past, uh, past or current challenges, and I, I think that my my willingness to learn and my willingness to change and my my hunger to really understand myself and uh, has has you know led me along a path. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a, a a hungry reader. I listen to audios. All day, every day, a lot. Um, I have some certain philosophers that I have really um, studied, and I think that that is it, it's. But it's having that willingness to really um, open the door to ourselves and to know that it's safe. It's okay. It's okay to open that door, and uh, we can peel back the layers. And when we peel back the layers, there, there are there are treasures. And uh, those treasures, are, you know, it's a fascinating, the internal journey is, is a fascinating journey, just as the previous speaker was talking about the outer journey. You know, I, 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 you know the, the inner journey is, is, is for me where my fascination lies um, because it is unlimited. We're never going to get the job done. 
you know, it is a lifelong occupation of self-discovery, um, but in, in, in a joyful and, uh, and, a, and a fascinating way. And I think that's really what has, uh, has enabled me to, you know, to, to really have compassion and empathy. And everyone has a challenge in some way, shape or form. And, uh, but there is always a solution if we're willing to look for it and willing to change. Well, we've been enjoying this talk with Bridget Long. Her talk is called Power of the Mind. And in a moment, we'll be right back with Bridget Long for the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at classicsontap.com. And we're back. It is time for the Blitz Round. We are here with Bridget Long. I am going to ask her a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent TEDx Southampton University talk. Bridget, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. First question. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? I applied. Uh, Are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender? I'm a 100% memorizer. Ah, How'd that work for you? Word for word. Word for word. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I, I, I think that the, what was very, very scary is that most of the talks that I do are extremely interactive and inclusive. And uh, so I work with my audiences rather than just me speak and other people listen. I love having interaction and seeing people's reactions. You know, I do, for example, a, uh, an exercise with audiences where I get everybody to take their phones out, put the camera on and look into it themselves and, and, um, and, and tell themselves that they love and accept themselves exactly as they are. I mean, it's a wonderful experience. So I couldn't do any of that. Um, so I was in this, sort of, was this, this mounting panic of not being able to improvise and to interact with the audience like I normally do. Uh, so I decided the only way that I was going to get through this is to learn it literally word for word. And so that's what I did. Yeah. Did you uh, have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? Um, I think by the time I got to the stage and I was very confident that I would remember what I needed to say, I felt I felt okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was nervous. I would say that uh, um, I didn't have the kind of excitement that I normally have when I got when I got on stage. So that was really challenging for me. Hmm. And as I said, not to be able to get that that real interaction from the audience, but uh, but otherwise it was fine. That's uh, not something that I normally hear. Usually it's, it's nerves or something like that, but uh, not being, not being excited enough or not, not getting that, uh, that Mm -hmm. charge from the audience. That's a little bit unusual. But then again, that's, you're frequently, uh, speaking in public. So, uh, that, that becomes uh, more of an issue. Actually, it's more of an issue not to have that, that charge than it is to, to be a little extra nervous. Yeah. I, I think that the, the one thing thing I was a little bit nervous about uh, was the aftermath because it's a very personal thing mm. that I, I shared on stage yes and uh, I, I I know I knew that by accepting to do a TEDx that that was it then I I, I couldn't be a secret agent anymore mm. I was I was out there on the public domain so I think that was probably where my nervosity was it really was about being that that's it now there's no there's no turning back because I am going to be you know in the public domain, if you like. And this is a personal question, so you can pass on it. But uh, um, uh, I, I'm just wondering if those fears were realized, Bridget, or if you found that that it was the best thing to do to share in the way that you did. Or if, if there was kind of there, there really was a working out of, of all of those feelings afterwards. Um, I think with hindsight, I would have maybe... Um, scripted the talk a little bit more differently Mm -hmm. but as a general rule I got a very very positive feedback Mm -hmm. and uh, I was um, I'm very glad that I did it because I came off stage and I thought well if I can if I can do that I can do anything else (laughs) so it did it was very empowering I will say that absolutely well this is the cut for time question what was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out oh (laughs) how long you got (laughs) <laughs> uh, not, uh, <laughs> um, 
I, I Top of the that, waves. Yeah, uh, well, yes, the, the, the most painful part about it was um, really trying to get across impactful messages in a very, very limited amount of time and where I didn't have that free flow. Hmm. Uh, so in the end, my talk was only about 12 and a half minutes um, but I, because of the free, because I, I, I really, really wanted to memorize it. It really was about, you know, being concerned about not being able to get really the points, the points across. And of course, having watched it since I thought I could have simplified it into fewer sort of topics and then gone deeper into, into fewer topics. Mm-hmm. But, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. It's, it's fine. Well, it's a wonderful thing. And 12 minutes of talk time is not a long talk at all. Even for a TEDx no. talk, that's that's a pretty <laughs> succinct talk. So uh, so good for you. We have been talking to Bridget Long. This has been the Blitz Round, and her talk is called Power of the Mind. If you want to watch this talk, and I would recommend that you do, go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com. We will have a clickable link. You can watch Bridget's talk, and we will also have a LinkedIn link where you can connect with Bridget as well. If you've been through a similar situation, if you want to be able to connect with someone who has been through it and uh, is has hope on the other side, we will have a LinkedIn link for you on there to Bridget's LinkedIn. And in a moment, we will be back with the 10-second final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at bethetalk.com. And we're back. It's time for the final word of advice for Talk Universe. Do it. (laughs) Um, The final word of advice. Yes. uh, Don't think, act. Follow your instinct, your intuition, your gut feeling. If it's if 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 you feel that it's something that you get, that you're compelled to do, then just do it because it is an incredible experience. Um, the fact that the fact that I applied, I had to jump through loads of hoops, interviews, emails, what I wanted to talk about, structure, um, you know, phone calls. So so that just getting to the stage was 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 probably one of the biggest challenges, not just actually um, writing the talk and then learning it and delivering it. Uh, So it was, I really had to drill deep and I think that it was very character building. So um, I would definitely say, uh, yeah, uh, do it. (laughs) Bridget Long, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.